all right what's up youtube redline gary coming at you here we're going to talk about setup so first up what you'll see is a crude drawing you'll see that the green represents zero to 180 degrees 120 degrees and 60 degrees respectively what this is is this is showing you the entry and exit points of the turn now on a lot of circle track applications this is going to be very similar the zero to 60 degree mark indicated in what would essentially be turn one or zone one shows where you need to decelerate put the car into the turn position this is followed by the apex which is when you want to start gassing up again getting on the throttle to push you or pull you into and through zone two or the 120 degree to 180 degree mark where this is crucial is because the suspension loads and unloads in these various zones very differently. This is a controlling factor that the driver has the ability to get into a line that harder on the suspension. The other reason why this is very crucial is because this also plays a factor into the overall speed or how fast you can negotiate turns one and two, zone one and two or three or four. Different tracks have different elements to them in these varying zones to where the driver has to respond accordingly and the car has to be set up in a way that can respond to the driver. So with this we have stuff like weight, kinetic energy, the forces uh, you know applied, gravitational, normal, frictional, air resistance, tension, and spring. Things like tire compound, tread depth, thread pattern, wheel weight, balance, heat cycles of the tires, track conditions, the durometer, all these things play a major role into understanding because if you have too much tread that's going down onto the track that kinetic energy can in fact slow you down also too hard of a suspension can put too much tread down along with you know your associated tire pressure so on and so forth so the factors the driver must hit the marks of the entering and entering and exiting points in the turns how long the driver's on the gas how many rpms is the car actually turning because if we're turning higher rpm that is one thing but if the tire revolution itself is a it's naturally going to be a lower amount than the rpm however the wheel rpm is very important because then that dictates how much speed you can actually carry into the turn you want to go through those turns as, as fast and as smooth as humanly possible then it's up to when the driver gets back onto the gas in the apex how fast can the engine get up to rpm because you want you want that car to once that suspension unloads and he hits or he or she hits that gas you want it to instantly respond and rocket off of those turns okay if you're applying too much brake going into the turn because you're going in too hot you know are the brakes set up way too hard to where it slows the car the revolutions down so much that you're losing time you're losing tenths of a second braking can be controlled through other classes through like different boxes and different designs and things like that with a stock class it's very difficult because you're limited to what the factory produced we get into tire pressure Ackerman angle, suspension travel load, suspension travel unload, negative camber. Uh, race cars in general have negative camber in one if not all tires, depending on your track rules and class rules, etc. Uh, some class rules, track rules allow for rear steer. That is not where the tires actually turn. Along with that, there's stagger, which is very similar to rear steer. Ride height is another one that is crucial because yes the lower the car can get to the ground the more the faster it's going to be with durometer okay softer compounds get better results however you got to balance out the factors at hand of okay track conditions tech, uh, track temp, uh, temperature if the tires are heating up way too fast then by the end of you know 20 30 40 even a hundred lap race you're going to find out real quick that the tires can take a major hit so you want to make sure that the durometer is 
in line for the specific track conditions that you're running. Generally, that also means how pliable the tire is in response to the air pressures that are applied to it. Now, when we get into shocks, understanding you know how to rate your coils, really it boils down to understanding what the, the springs and shocks are rated at. You can rate these. So when talking about a slip angle, okay, it's the difference between the direction of the race car that it's going and actually the where the body is pointing. Generally, it transfers the weight from front to rear. We're talking, they, they call it a relative roll. So what that is, is the rate, the weight transfers from the inside to the outside wheel of a turn from front to rear. Generally, this angle is about six to 10 degrees. That varying lateral load can be the difference between picking up four tenths of a second or not. So setting up the car, a car could be set up perfect, but the driver has to be able to do what they need to do in that car. So if you really like this video and you want more information, uh, like, comment, share, subscribe, you know, it really helps out the channel, really helps get these videos out to people that really need them. I mean, if you're really interested in getting into a pit crew, it's crucial to understand these basics and fundamentals for setup. You know, you absolutely can learn an awful lot. You can control a lot of factors with the actual car, but once again, the car and the driver have to be one. And being since we're not the ones in the car necessarily, we have to rely on that relationship. So until then, I'm Redline Gary. Keep it on the track.